Welcome to the Tim Runs His Mouth podcast. I'm Tim Young, and uh, we've got a lot to cover today. I wanted to talk about a few things, obviously, a lot of crazy things that happened. But on Friday, of course, the $1.2 trillion spending bill passed, uh, which is uh, not good for anything in America. And we were warned about it. I'm going to tell you two of the people who warned us about it. We're going to go right to my Twitter where we show this. Uh, the people who warned us about it, uh, two of the loudest were Chip Roy and Marjorie Taylor Greene. Let's show, uh, let's go to the film, shall we? Can't blame them for what's happening. Everybody else in the House GOP, I don't know, though. Own it. Here you go. You vote for this, you own it. You own the release of illegal aliens with notices to appear in court as far out as 2035 and growing. And limited knowledge to where they even are. You own it. You own the unlawful mass parole programs, the use of the CBP One app. The funding you're voting for tomorrow will fund that. Of over one million individuals, including the known member of a Venezuelan prison gang who violently murdered Lake and Riley. You own that. It's not good enough to pass a bill last week and name after Lake and Riley and then come here and write the check to the very people who are responsible for allowing it to occur. You own bringing the chaos in Haiti to the shores of America via the Cuban and Haitian and Nicaraguan and Venezuelan parole program. You own that. The Haitian migrant who raped a 15-year-old disabled girl who was here as a migrant in Massachusetts. You're funding that. The dismantling dismantling of the migrant protection protocols that were effective under the previous president, you're funding that. You're funding the halt of the wall construction. You're funding the legal attacks on the state of Texas for standing up to try to secure our border, even as our National Guard get overrun. This is, by the way, you are funding that. This is, by the way, this is absolutely all true. This is what got funded. And by the way, if you want to know who voted for this bill, and we're going to go back to Chipper in a second here, if you want to know who voted for the bill, it was all of your Republicans in plus 10 Republican districts. And a lot of them had already uh, won their primary. So for those of you playing along at home, once these people got safe, they betrayed the American people once again. They're not even waiting anymore. At least give it a couple of months. That's the theme of today is, at least give it a couple of months before you start screwing voters. At least give it a little bit of time before you start uh, running over people. They voted for this stuff, $1.2 trillion, and, and there's much more than what he's just mentioning in this three-minute clip. I'm going to let him keep going. If you vote for this bill tomorrow, Texas has had to spend over $12 billion of its own money. I can tell you what you're not funding. You're not funding paying taxes back. And I'm talking to my Texas delegation friends now. Are you literally going to go home to Texas when your own National Guard are getting overrun? Your own state is not getting paid back. We're not getting any policy changes. You're going to increase the debt and you're going to go try to sell that garbage to the people of Texas? Spare me when I see you campaigning this year on border security. It's a fraud. It's a fraud for Republicans to campaign on border security while you fund it. I have to give Chip Roy credit, too, by the way. He was one of the few Republicans who stayed back when Republicans went and did their their little uh, video that they did uh, on the border. They showed up. They did their photo op. They're like, oh, the border's so bad. They did kind of an AOC number. And after they did that, uh, they came back and voted for everything that Biden wanted, funded all of his uh, his illegal immigrant programs. Chip Roy is one of the few people who have stood up the entire time and said, hey, uh, no, and I'm not participating in this BS. Back into him. He, he's totally right here, by the way. You fund the lawlessness. You fund the open borders. You fund the death of Lake and Riley. You fund the fentanyl pouring into our communities and killing our kids. You own the DHS memos policies and rules that restrict Border Patrol's ability to do their job. You own it. 
You own the continued exploitation of unaccompanied minors, the little girls getting sold into the sex trafficking trade, the 85,000 children that were lost by the very office of refugee resettlement that you will fund tomorrow. You own it. Don't campaign against it and then write the check. Exactly. Vote- and that's and that is just the beginning of the the tip of the iceberg of things, by the way, in this bill that were funded. So uh, and also there's a, a red flag law that's in this. So there's there's a red flag law that's involved in this that got pushed. A two hundred million dollars for the new FBI headquarters, which by the way, remember all the uh, all those same Republicans who are campaigning on wanting to uh, secure the border. They're also saying defund the FBI when the FBI does these illegal investigations into people, they just gave them a new headquarters. They're paying for uh, gender mutilation, basically, of children as part of it, late-term abortions as part of this. Everything is paid for. They just caved on everything. And they're saying, oh, we're negotiating. There's no place left to negotiate. There's nowhere left to go. But hey, that's uh, in your, if you're in an R plus 10 district, your member most likely just screwed you. Just screwed you after you voted for them. Congratulations. You just got screwed. You got played by your own people. I want to find the uh, the Marjorie Taylor Green clip here. I thought I had it pulled up for you guys. Uh, insane. It, it, it's insane. It's insulting. Where did I put it? You know, sometimes I prepare for these. I'm going to pull up because MTG was also screaming about it the other day, and she was a thousand percent correct. Here we go. And here we go. Here's Marjorie Taylor Greene with Chip Roy yelling about how ridiculous this bill is. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise in extreme opposition to the second part of the omnibus bill. No Republican in the House of Representatives in good conscience can vote for this bill. Oh, but they did. Oh, but they did. So you can thank Speaker Johnson for that. You can also thank Speaker Johnson for getting rid of George Santos, who, by the way, uh, might be a lunatic, but Democrats don't get rid of their lunatics. George Santos uh, got rid of him and uh, lost one more vote that they could have had in their very, very slim majority. But hey, whatever. Give away your power and then vote for whatever. It is a complete departure of all of our principles, especially if you call yourself pro-life. This bill funds full-term abortion. This is not a Republican bill. This is a Chuck Schumer, Democrat-controlled bill coming from the House majority that is supposed to be controlled by Republicans, but yet our majority has been completely Members are reminded over to, to direct their remarks to the chair. Please. Madam Speaker, it is the will of our voters, and it is the will of Republicans across the country, that this bill should not be brought to the floor, that this bill will will absolutely destroy our majority and will tell every single one of our voters that this majority is a failure. This is the bill that the White House cannot wait to sign into law. This is the bill that rips our border wide open and tells every single person in over 160 countries around the world they can invade our country, they can run over our Border Patrol, they can run over our Texas National Guard, they can come in, rape our women, murder our people, and squat and take over our homes. This is an atrocious attack on the American people. The Speaker of the House should not bring it to the floor, and this bill should not pass. 1,000%, and they could have kept it off the floor. They could have kept it off the floor, but they didn't, and this bill passes. Again, here we go, Uh, and and then there are, uh, I will show you here, House Republicans, according to House Republicans, uh, slammed 200 million funding for new FBI headquarters. Okay. But a bunch of them voted for it. So whatever. What are you doing? It's behind a paywall. No. All right. We'll see if this video pulls up. This is not, again, nope. Well, look, all you're going to get is a headline, apparently. I'm not joining Fox News or any other thing, joining an email list to get it. So there you go. There's your headline. So much for those cuts to the FBI. And again, it's, it's Chip Roy. He's the one that stood up. You can say I never sign up for things. <laughs> sign up for the American Greatness uh, email list, uh, please. 
but I won't sign up for websites to go uh, read articles that that if you if you share them, if your organization shares and an, uh, an, an article on Twitter and I can't just click right through it, I'm not going to click to it. But again, 200 million for a new funding for an FBI headquarters was just part, just tip of the iceberg, just tip of the iceberg uh, on top of funding for uh, aiding in genital mutilation of children and mutilation of children, which history will look back on very negatively. Uh, the uh, funding of uh, illegal Im immigration programs to help those people get across the border, uh, funding of late-term abortions, and uh, red flag laws. What can be said? The House GOP, again, has completely betrayed America. What a bunch of failures. Uh, someone... Uh, uh, where do you want to go from here? I mean, this is, I, I could complain about this for a long time, but I think we've all seen it. I think we've all, we all know about it by now. Uh, there are a lot of crazy angles we can go to here. There's a lot of different things that are happening. Uh, let's go funny. We'll go funny before we go back to, uh, serious and ridiculous. We'll kind of, we'll, we'll tear it down. We'll tear it, uh, where we go with it. So this is, uh, the other day, uh, Kamala Harris visited Puerto Rico. And there was a protest song about her uh, where the the lyrics, apparently, and this is from Colin Rugg on Twitter and a bunch of other places. I never know who the first people are who report these because once a video takes off, they basically, everybody takes the same video and pushes it. So uh, Kamala Harris went to Puerto Rico and there was a, sp a song in Spanish because obviously she can barely speak English, so she can't speak Spanish either. Uh, where uh, they were saying it was a protest song. We want to know what you come here for. We want to know the vice president's here making history. We want to know what she thinks of the colony. Uh, long live free Palestine and Haiti too were part of the things in this. And Kamala Harris, of course, because she's stupid, clapped along to a song protesting her. Is that her white husband next to her? The uh, second gentleman. <laughs> So here, her staff returns to her and goes, hey, uh, this song, they don't like you. And she's like, oh, oh. So here, we'll, we'll take this song out. She's clapping along. We'll do a play, play by player. She's clapping along because she's stupid. Then her staff are very similar to Veep, very similar to uh, Selena Meyer on Veep. There she is. Oh, I, I won't uh, I won't clap at that anymore. Yeah. OK. Well, there we go. That's uh, Kamala Harris being as stupid as possible as usual. I mean, this is this is the representation of our country. Why? Why? Why do we even bother anymore? Why do we even bother anymore? I'll tell you what. Uh, you know what? You get what you you get what you vote for, though, with her the diversity hire. And then in Boston now, this is amazing to me. In Boston, there's a group of black churches now demanding reparations and $5 billion from white churches in Boston. This isn't racist at all, you guys. I don't know what you're talking about. Here they are. Again, this is off, off the rails. Here's a group of people, and always white women with them, by the way. Always, white women are the worst. These are the people who watch The View, these white women. But this is a group of uh, black churches who got together, and they're like, we've got a great idea. Let's demand money from white churches now. That makes perfect sense. Here we go. We call on the white church in Boston to join us. In so I didn't know there was a white church in Boston, by the way. Did you know that? I thought churches, I thought it was come as you are, and I thought God accepted everyone. But apparently... Uh, in Boston, according to this guy and this group of people, uh, there are very... Hey, that's the guy. Okay, hold on. In the background here, I'm pretty sure that's the Ren is Too High guy. Is that him? Remember the Ren is Too too Damn High? He was running for mayor of New York? Anyway, I didn't realize there were white churches. I, I thought that uh, churches had been desegregated, but apparently not in Boston, where they're uh, Asian mayor who hates white people and is married to a white guy, as par for the course. Um allows things like this. We call on the white church in Boston to join us in supporting a black rep reparations movement. Standing in solidarity, clergy leaders from across the city of Boston gathered 
for an interfaith multi. That's not the rent is too damn high guy. Racial meeting at the Resurrection Lutheran Church in Roxbury, Nubian Square. They're here. Oh, in Nubian Square. See, they even named it like they have to make sure that it sounds as segregated as possible, but in a classy way. Square. They're here to ask the religious community to atone for Black Boston suffering and support Black reparations. It's it's obviously it's it's quote unquote white churches that caused the problem in the black community there, right? Get out of here. I mean, this is insanity. And we are coming, as Dr. King said, to get our check. Uh, I don't believe. Now I'm not. You can you can correct me, but I don't I don't believe I've seen in the past where Dr. King said, hey, go raid white churches for their money. I, I must have missed I thought everybody was supposed to come together. I thought his message was everybody come together. We're all children of God, not, uh, hey, black churches, go label other churches white and take their money. I must have, I must have missed that part. I, again, who am I, you know? Organizers from the Boston People's yes. Reparation Commission say... The Boston People's Reparation Commission. Nothing says uh, unemployable people who want handouts quite like the Boston People's Reparation Commission. Why don't you call them the People's Republic of Boston? They're also following up on their demand on the city of Boston for a $15 billion initial payout. To <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'm going to have to play that again. Fifteen billion. They want fifteen billion dollars. Why? Hey, if we're spending a uh, uh, one point two trillion, why not just burn money at this point? Initial payout to begin the process towards repair for a fifteen billion dollar initial payout to begin the process towards repair and reconciliation to the city's black community. Five billion dollars as initial payment around cash payouts. Must be nice to, to to like be so confident to show up and demand billions of dollars from people for something that never involved you. Were any of these people slaves? No. Were any of the people in Boston currently slave owners? No. But hey, they need fifteen fifteen billion dollars. They what? A, yeah. Hey, I'm not making enough money right now in Biden uh, Bidenomics under Bidenomics. I need uh, fifteen billion from the city. $5 billion around uh, strengthening our financial institutions, creating a new black bank, uh, $5 billion in terms of uh, addressing issues of uh, the education achievement gap between blacks and whites. Uh, why don't you go to your teachers unions who make an awful lot of money and bother them for the, the education, the education gap? You think there's other problems that might be causing the education gap? We just throw money at it. That'll fix it. Pay us. Pay us billions of dollars. We're going to identify churches as white, and then we're going to tell them to pay us billions of dollars to uh, to fix the education gap. We're not going to hold the uh, teachers union or the city uh, the city ed department of education accountable. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. No. We're going to go to white churches, people we've identified as a, a white church. Got it. 2022, the Boston City Council and Mayor Michelle Wu offered an official apology for the city's involvement in the transatlantic slave trade. She also launched two task force research teams to study Boston's role in slavery and its long impact on descendants. So we still suffer from the trauma of those instances and even today uh, dealing with racism. On Saturday, a lot of racism got... Clearly, there's so much racism in Boston today that a group of people can come out after the uh, the mayor, the Asian mayor, who, who also had, I, I, where, where do you even begin? Uh, the Asian mayor is, has uh, apologized for slavery, of course. So she had nothing to do with it. Maybe her white husband did. Um, but they're talking about the racism today in Boston. Please, please. We need, again, Please show me real racism in Boston right now. What is it? Some guy yell at you once? Maybe. Please. I, I'm really sick of this. The Boston's so racist that a group of people can get together and demand $15 billion after they have declared certain churches segregated as white. In and they and they met in their black church in Nubian Square, but everything is racist. It's so racist there. Right. Got it. 
this group called on the white church in Boston to support the black community for its association in slavery. Today we call upon this city, its financiers, and its white church. Is this, is this a, a white lesbian woman? Because that's, I mean, basically that's the, he watches the view too and, and wants to cry along, feel good about himself. Churches to stop the shirt. I'm pretty sure that guy in the purple shirt is the rent is too damn high guy. Is that guy still alive? Is he still Jimmy? Jimmy McMillan is his name. No, maybe it's not him. I'm going to see if I can pull up the uh, the image of this fella. He's one of my favorite people. When he did this. Okay. Stop the lying. Tell the truth and pay what is owed. And gonna... Stop the lying. And stop. What's what lying are they? What are they lying about? Stop the lying. You got to pay us money. What? What? Okay, here's the, uh, I want to show you. I'm not crazy on this one. Uh, you know it starts well when I say I'm not crazy. I see the guy at the podium there. Let me see if this works. It's on him. Is that on him? Jimmy McMillan? Now, let's wrap up this uh, this video again. This is we call and wokeness is a pretty good news source for this stuff, by the way. And I just say the next step is to engage in conversation with white church leadership direct. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna engage in conversation with white leadership directly now, guys. The white church leadership. It's important. Not only did they segregate them, it's important that we get out there and uh, and uh, and and talk about taking their money. What a what a look at this but what a rogues gallery look at these people this is <laughs> oh boy all right so uh i i is jimmy mcmillan so what that's that was that him he's still alive so he'd be 77 that could be him but i think he looks a lot slicker i think jimmy jimmy mcmillan's looking a lot slicker nowadays than uh than the guy demanding 15 billion dollars who knows might be him though I mean, I wouldn't blame him. It's good business. Look at that rogues gallery, though. Can't get enough of that. Uh, I want to congratulate somebody. You want to talk about things that are going on, going right in the world. Look, if you want to be a career loser, like Ronna Romney McDaniel, you can sign deals with NBC News. Uh, Ronna Romney McDaniel, oh, apparently Chuck Todd did not like uh, Ronna Romney McDaniel getting signed by NBC News. So let's see this here. Uh, Rana, of course, uh, famous for losing every election for Republicans, making a lot of money and getting a lot of Botox. That's her. Good old Rana. All right, so here, uh, NBC News apparently not happy with this. Oh, here, but this is good. I've not seen this yet, so we're going to read along while we're doing the podcast. NBC News and MSNBC are in an uproar over the hiring of former RNC chair Ronna McDaniel as a political analyst, which took top journalists at the network by surprise when it was announced Friday in a rare on-air protest. Chuck Todd, who cries like a baby, very ugly man. I cried too if I looked like him. One of the most recognizable faces of NBC News because it's so ugly. Said on Meet the Press Sunday that McDaniel has credibility issues that she still has to deal with. Are we pretending... Are we pretending that NBC News and Chuck Todd don't have credibility issues that they still have to deal with? Uh, this is Axios, so they do a little breakdown here. Why it matters. With former President Trump as a presumptive Republican nominee, networks are trying to reflect the MAGA perspective without giving platform to election deniers. Oh, here we go. Oh, you denied the election, even though everyone on the left did it in 2016 and continue to do it today when they say that there was Russian interference and there was no way that Hillary Clinton lost without that. So that's what it is. Uh, what we're hearing, the view of NBC News executives is that Ronna McDaniel is one of the, is of one voice among dozens of contributors and that the network can't ignore the views of a significant point of the country. Yeah, like 75 million or more. But she doesn't even, she doesn't even uh, represent a significant part of the Republican base. She's, I mean, she, I guess she probably went to try to get a, uh, a job with the view, but she's too ugly. So they put her on MSNBC where she can blend in with uh, heavy hitters like Rachel Maddow and, uh, and Joy Reid. She can look just as crazy as them. She has those crazy eyes. Oh, well, 
you get what you get. Let them fight. That's where I am on that one. Let them fight. Let them fight. Uh, and other news also. I want you to see this. This weekend, Joe Biden can't seem to let go of this inject yourself with bleach lie. It, it, I don't understand. Maybe it's the one thing. Here he is with uh, the actual president, Barack Obama, and an elderly woman. I can only imagine what that room smells like. Uh, pushing this lie again about the inject yourself with bleach. This is the guy who doesn't care about science and reason. Remember, during the pandemic, Donald Trump told us to inject them, ourselves with bleach. He said there's nothing to worry about if you do that. Uh, did he say that? I must have missed it. Did you guys miss that part where he said that? In fact, if we go to the follow-up video, posted. <clears throat> excuse me, oh man, you get a free sneeze on this podcast. There's a follow-up video that someone posted right underneath of it, showing that uh, showing the exact quote that they've taken out of context from Donald Trump from that press conference. Uh, did Donald Trump ever say inject yourself with bleach? Uh, let's find out. You are thinking of if you're totally into that world, which I find to be very interesting. So, supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light. And I think you said that hasn't been checked, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that too. Sounds interesting. Right. right. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or, Almost a cleaning. He's he's asking he's asking a scientific effort uh, expert if there's a way that you could use some type of cleaner or some type of a disinfectant or UV light to clean the blood. Because you see, it gets on the. Does he say it's safe to inject yourself with bleach? Lungs and it does a tremendous number of lungs. So it'd be interesting to check that. So that you're going to have to use medical doctors with. But it sounds it sounds interesting to me. So we'll see. But the whole concept of the light, the way it kills it in one minute, that's uh, that's pretty powerful. There you go. Did Donald Trump ever say it? No, he did not. No, he did not. It's a complete lie. Again, uh, a total and complete fabrication that the media has ran with and that Joe Biden has run with for a very long time. Trump never said it. So, again, and where would where would the fact checkers be on this? Nowhere. Nowhere at all. They never check Biden. Only uh, they'll check my memes. They'll check your memes. They'll uh, they'll follow up if you sneeze in the wrong direction, like I did earlier in the show, about three minutes ago. But will they uh, will they ever fact check Joe Biden on the claim that Donald Trump told you to inject bleach and that it was safe? Nope, never. Because why would they? Know what you're up against, folks. Know what you're up against. A bunch of morons and uh, and people who believe that they are owed free money and uh, they'll believe anything that uh, Biden who stumbles everywhere and barely knows his own name will say. So that being said, that's going to be it for today's Tim runs his mouth podcast. I'm Tim young. Uh, you can go follow more things at American greatness. Go check out all the articles on the website. Also go follow me at Tim runs his mouth, like share, subscribe. Love you guys. I'll see you next time here. I got to put up this here. Boom. Oh, and don't forget uh, cigarsdirect.com. I'll see you next time guys. It's been great hanging out. See you soon.